welcome to gentle yoga class. So totally up to you if you want to have your camera on. We are going to be using two blocks and a pillow or a yoga bolster. And this will be some gentle movement. I always like to do a little stretching before and in between the restorative postures. And nothing is meant to feel uncomfortable at any time. So just remember, it's always okay to back off. And we will start with the playlist. It's titled Wednesday Gentle 22. If you don't want to have music or you prefer to use your own, also totally fine. Okay, and um, just make sure you don't have it on shuffle. And I'll do my countdown. Three, two, one, play. And then you'll go ahead and set yourself up on the mat. Regular old Shavasana. If the low back is feeling sensitive, you'll use your pillow under the knees. You can always use blocks and a blanket under the knees as well, just wanting to give a little bit of that extra cushion. Palms face up. So find that space between the sides of the body and the arms. So there's space for the ribs to spread wide as you breathe. So oftentimes we practice that diaphragmatic breath, that belly breathing, but there's also a way to let the skeletal muscles, these muscles within the rib cage, to help aid in the breath, that inhalation, a spreading. And then as you exhale, just melting, letting it go. So as you start to use those muscles between the ribs, naturally it's giving space within the cavity of the torso for your belly to fill. If you've done other breath work, maybe you've always tried or heard belly and then chest, but this is just giving the ribs an opportunity to lead. Can you soften your brow, relax the muscles around your eyes? Where is your body giving you that signal and that permission to release and to also be in that place of trust that your body knows what to do here? You made the choice to be here, logic played its role, and now you get to really just be here. Now just finding a natural pace of your breath, nothing to control or guide. And if it's possible, close the mouth so that your breath is coming in and out through the nose. There might be outside noises. You hear the sound of the music. Can you hear from the inside out the sound of your breath? Couple more breaths here, option to let your hands now rest on to the body. So maybe that's at the lower belly Shakti center, or maybe you're letting your hands rest on the rib cage just right um, under the sternum. So you feel that movement of your body. Even allowing the wisdom in the hands, that place of giving and receiving 
to really feel here, feeling the warmth of your body and feeling the movement. Simple contact point. And so whatever it is that wants to be freed within you an experience from earlier in the day, a frustration, an emotional response, a letting go, a forgiveness, letting that really come through the body using your breath. Clearing out what is ready to be released so that you can be more clear in your power, your purpose your ability to be present. Slowly, we're going to come up to a seat. Take your time. Prop yourself up using the hands. If you want to keep the eyes closed, totally fine, but you'll move your props off to the side. And we're going to come up either to a Baddha Konasana, or if you like to take the position, we've done this one before, with the feet planted and then the arms wrapped around the knees with the forehead resting on the forearms. That's another option. If things are still feeling a little too tight for that, take your butterfly shape. Baddha Konasana, you can either sit tall, hands can come behind you, or you're folding forward. And if you're folding forward, maybe there's that opportunity to take an elbow inside the knee or a hand inside the knee, a little personal assist for a hip opener here. Just reminding your body that it's not stuck in that parallel shape for the hips. Three more breaths. If you're folding forward with the forehead resting, can you really let the back of the neck go? Inhale, sit tall wherever you are. Feet will come along and then draw the left knee in. Sit up into it so there's a pulling so you sit up on top of the sit bones if that right leg needs to be bent a little bit that's totally fine but keep that leg active and then you're coming into a twist so twist towards the left you can take your left hand behind you power up that right leg not so important how far you're twisting priority here is finding the length that upward lift through your chest, like you're lifting your heart through the throat all the way up to the crown of the head. Slowly unwind, both legs long, inhale, reach up, exhale, right knee in. So already feeling equal on both sit bones here, adding in the twist. And you can have that activity of the biceps working, the arms working and pulling while keeping the neck relaxed. Turn on the left leg, your standing leg. Slowly unwind. Inhale, arms reach up, option to look up, flip the palms up. And then again, left knee in, seated tree. So open up the knee that time. If you want your strap, you can grab it, reach up, exhale, fold. Let your hands land wherever they land, on the shin, on the foot. Can you find some length through the spine here so that you're really letting your heart lead the way? If you were gonna fold all the way onto the leg, what would happen if your heart is going to land before your eyes. So that length through the spine also helps to lift you up and out of your pelvis. This time sit tall, you're gonna take that left knee up and then if it's possible, take the left foot up and over. If not, just do the same thing we did earlier. 
pause. So if this is a lot of work already, just take your hands behind you, pause here. Otherwise, adding on that twist, option to hook the right elbow. And then again, even though things are twisted up there, can you turn on that right leg? Lift through the spine, open up those right toes. Hold the twist. And as you hold the twist, can you turn your gaze back towards me or back the other direction over that left, uh, sorry, right shoulder? And then find full twist. So up and over left shoulder again, look back behind you. And then slowly unwind everything. Five, four, three, two, one. Take that foot back up and over. Reach both legs long. Inhale, reach. Paschimottanasana, forward fold. Inhale, sit up. Draw right knee in. Seated tree, open it up. So already here, there's lots of activity through the torso as you lift up and out of the hips and then fold forward. Turn on that left leg. And rather than rounding forward, you know, this can be the wrong leg, but rather than rounding forward, can you find length through the spine and then you're hinging at the hips here to find that hamstring stretch. If you want to grab the strap, go ahead. So we're working. Don't worry, we have more relaxation poses coming. This is helping to prepare your body for that and still equal weight on the sit bones. As you breathe and give your body a little time, you might start to fold more deeply. Nothing needs to be overdone here. Where can you give yourself a break? And if that feels unfamiliar, that's okay. You're here doing the work. Inhale, sit tall. Right knee comes up. If it's available, take that right foot up and over. You might just hang out here or you're adding on the twist. Also totally fine to take the hands behind you, that kickstand variation, which can also help to lift the heart and find that length through the spine. Otherwise, take your twist, option to hook the elbow. Turn on your left leg, has a mind of its own. Hold the twist, turn your gaze other direction. Counter twist for the neck. You might even feel more length when you do that. Let it happen. And then again, all the way back over that right shoulder. Full expression of the twist. Slowly unwind everything. Five, four, three, two, one. Take that foot back up and over. Both legs long, handstand on the sky. Slowly roll down. Reach the arms long up overhead. Plant both feet. And then it's that reclined cat cow rocking of the pelvis. Or if you want to draw the knees into the chest, go ahead. Otherwise, just find the release with that reclined cat cow arounding and an arching. Slowly, we're going to set up with the props. So you'll take, I told you to get your, yeah, I told you to get your blocks. 
and a pillow. I'm like, where's my pillow? We will take the supports long. So you can use your pillow, Hanayama, cushion, bolster. I'm just gonna use my blanket. Way up and over. Let the arms fall off to the side. It should be comfortable to have the legs long, but if you need even more length for the low back, you can always bend the knees. I'm gonna demonstrate and take the feet wide, knees together. Otherwise, just let the legs fall wide. And so come back, what did it feel like earlier in that Shavasana when you were finding space for the ribs, remember? Can you tuck the elbows in a little bit closer to the body than the hands in this shape? And now start to let your energy expand with the breath. So as you breathe in, you can feel energy reaching all the way down to the feet. And as you breathe out, let energy move all the way up through the top of the head, crown of the head. Trusting that your body knows how to breathe. And if this shape isn't working for your head, you can always take a little extra rolled up towel blanket, something to lift the head slightly. I don't need that, but if that's your body shape, um, go ahead and give yourself the extra support there. It's okay to have a little extra cushion behind the head. And breathing in, energy down to the feet, really feeling that belly breath. And then as you exhale, the breath is coming up and out and the energy is moving up. Inhale, soft belly. Are there other areas of your body that are calling for your attention? That might feel like pain, tightness, hardness, might feel like a block of energy or like your breath can't move through a point or a joint. And so how can you take up a lot of space here on the mat, even taking up a lot of space with your awareness? So saying, I choose to be here now Again, even if it's unfamiliar, you're doing enough just by being here. Knowing that change will come, the shift that you are seeking will happen. Just like the inhale comes to an end, shifting to exhale, that natural rhythm of life. that organic unfolding and timeline of the human experience. And even start to think, what did time feel like before there was a clock? The sun still rose, the sun still set. So giving yourself permission to have that deeper experience that goes beyond the programming, beyond current daily modern culture, even just whatever's happening in current events right now, letting yourself have this experience that really exists within you, in your body. Before we come up and out of this shape, opportunity to roll out the wrists a little bit. Give yourself a hug. A little thank you for choosing to come on the mat. A little thank you for the self-care that you're choosing. 
Inhale, arms to a T, other arm on top. So even with all this sitting and um, daily modern activity of reaching in front of the body, it can feel counterintuitive to do this type of a stretch. But when you take the body to the end range of something, it also helps to open up space for the opposite range. Inhale, let the arms fall at your side. Two breaths here. Can you let the opening of your breath be enough right here? Slowly prop yourself back up to a seat. We're gonna take two more shapes. I think it should be enough time um, if you're having to leave. And so it's the double stag leg. It's like two 90 degree angles. And if your ankle is sensitive, you can place a little extra support under there. So you first find it. I think in Pilates, they call this one like a mermaid shape. And so the back leg can be tucked in as tight or as open as is comfortable for you. And then you're twisting up and over your support. You can lay with your right cheek onto the support, or if you have the flexibility, you can go ahead and turn all the way to the right with your left cheek resting. So just start with your hip pretty close to your support and then you can decide how far away you wanna be from it. If you want to have your face towards the earth, you can even create a little support with the hands. So just playing around with what's gonna feel best for you. And so naturally, naturally, there are some places in the body that we're closing off in the shape. How do you give your body permission to find the opening while still having those areas of constriction? Slowly, you'll start to bring movement as you bring your body away from the support. Let the head hang down. So prop yourself up on the hands. Two options for the transition. You can take your block up and over, or sorry, um, pillows, props up and over to the other side. Or what I like to do is to just switch my body. So come up and just change the orientation. So it's the other leg leading. Find those double stag legs, 90 degree angle, and then adjusting to whatever feels best, the angle of your knee that best supports an opening for the hip. Get pretty close to start and then you can always back off. Twist towards your support and then either coming into a twist there or you can keep kind of more, more of a 
um, laying on your side is totally fine here. And if you want to take your gaze to the earth, maybe just use a little extra support so you have room for the nose. Sometimes getting into the shape is when you start to figure out what you need. Isn't that just so appropriate for life? You can make all the plans, and then the flow of destiny has its own plan for us. So how do you show up, meet your own needs, while also being open and receptive to the unfolding? So whether that's the unfolding of your the rest of your evening, the unfolding of the rest of your week, the unfolding of re relationships, career goals, parenthood. And right here in this shape, it's all about you. Two more breaths here. Slowly transition using your hands to support you so that you're not adding on any extra twisting as you come up. And then you're going to transition into your child's pose. You can keep the supports right where they are. Finding a supported child pose. And again, um, just taking a little extra support under the forehead. So that could be taking the one block a little higher beyond um, your pillow or whatever you have. You might even just adjust your support. You can always use your cushions and other things that you have. Get creative. You want to feel your torso supported here. You can even add an extra block under the hips or a pillow. And so you even get to have that experience of taking a little extra time, a little bit of prep can go a long way once you're there, which again, mimicking, mirroring nutrition, mirroring, mirroring how we take care of ourselves, right? So always okay to readjust. But can you give yourself permission to take all the extra support you need so that you get to enjoy it. I have a support under my hips, under my belly, 
under my forehead. Couple more breaths. Slowly use the hands to start to press yourself up away from the holster supports. You can sweep them off to the side. Go ahead and keep one block handy. Lay onto your spine. We're gonna take a figure four, start with the right leg. Option to pause here or draw everything in. Right hand can come through the gap. And if you like to rock side to side, you can add that in. If figure four is not your jam, you can always take a lizard instead. Last breath. Release that squeeze, left foot to the earth. Kick the right foot up and we're taking a half happy baby. It's like a lunge on the ceiling. If you can't reach the foot, just wrap your arm around the back of the leg. And if it's available, extend left leg long. Getting a deeper hip stretch here. If you're grabbing the foot, can you take that left arm across and just hug the thigh in towards the side of the rib cage, that same area that we were working at the beginning of class? Plenty of space for your belly to breathe here. Work the arms, but release the sides of the neck. You can plug the shoulder blades towards the spine and towards the earth to help make that happen. Soften at the forehead center, last breath.
Inhale, reach that foot back up towards the sky. Extend it long. All the way back up. It's like that single leg bicycle just two more times. Flushing out the front of the hip a little bit here. And then switch sides. Right foot to the earth. The left foot reaches up. Come into your figure four. Option to thread the needle. Rock side to side. Whatever feels good for you. Finding that external hip stretch. Just like in the Baddha Konasana. Reminding your body what it's capable of after having to sit, drive, computer, whatever it is that you're doing in modern day life. It asks your body to be in that one static position, even walking and hiking. Last breath. As you release it, let the right foot plant to the earth, left foot up, exhale, half happy baby, find that lizard lunge on the ceiling. And if you have the foot, left hand outside, left outside of the left foot, take that right arm across your body and just hug in here. And remember, give your throat that permission for space by taking your shoulders down and back. creating space for your upper lobes of the lungs, and then also the belly. Last breath. If you have that right leg long, go ahead and bend it. Inhale, left foot towards the sky, extend it long on the mat. And then single leg bicycle, three, two, one. Switch feet, so left foot to the earth, right foot to the sky. Cross it up and over, it's like eagle legs, and we're just gonna take a twist. We're not gonna stay there for too long. Shift your hips over to the right. Legs come over to the left. Option to take your block under the legs. If that's too much, go ahead and stack the legs. You can even take a block in between as you let the legs fall over to the left. Or whatever version of your refined twist you wanna take. Last breath, slowly up and over, other side, grab your block, left foot crosses over, shift your hips to the left, find that twist, and let some support come under the knees unless they're easily touching the earth. Long spine, relax. Sending those signals to your nervous system through the body that access point, taking care of your body so that your body will take care of you. Calling in vibrance, calling in balance, and that dynamic, ever-changing connection of your body, your breath, and your desire. Who do you want to be? How do you want to feel? A couple more breaths here.
slowly start to unwind the twist. Unwind. Extend the legs long. One more stretch before we take another restorative shape. Arms up overhead. And then take your left leg over to the left side of the mat. Cross your right leg up and over. And then option to grab right wrist as you take your hands up and over to the right side of the mat. Sorry, I'm saying the wrong thing. Right wrist over to the, everything to the left. So you're creating that side bend. And the breath is still moving and the mind is still slowing. And you know where you are headed because you're choosing it. Let your body get even a little more floppy, a little less concerned about the shape, a little more concerned with the letting go and that heaviness coming into the body. Trusting that your breath will create the shape from the inside out. Slowly unwind, preparing for the other side. If you want to draw the knees into the chest for a low back release, option to do that. Or a couple of those reclined cat cows. And then when you're ready, right foot over to the right, left leg up and over. Grab the left wrist, option to take the hands up and over to the right. So this one's not a twist. It's a side bend. And so the belly sometimes can hang on a little bit more than, it, than is needed. So also okay to back off so you're not taking it as deep, especially if you have any tweaking in the low back. So even if you have to keep the legs straight and just take that left arm up and over, that's enough. Where is that? Where is that choice to surrender? Giving over the shape, giving over what it looks like, coming more into your embodied experience. The part that can't be explained. The part that you can't describe as a shape or a pattern or a visual. It's a feeling. And it's a place that feels good once you learn how to get there. A place that will call you back. Be here. You follow your breath so you're feeling from the inside of the lungs, inside of the torso, rib cage. Mm -hmm. 
the part of your body that connects you to what can't be seen outside of you. Last breath. Slowly unwind back through the center. Option to reset with the knees in. If you like to take knee circles, add that on. I even sometimes like to draw the knees in and then still take that cat cow, the rounding and the arching with the knees in. And then go ahead, plant the feet wide. You can even feel the side edges of the mat with your hands to kind of center yourself here. And then slowly let the knees come together. If you wanna try it, you can always take a block between the legs. So still finding a heaviness of the femur bone, whether you're letting the knees knock into the block or into each other. Pause, option to rest hands at the front of the hip point. Lots of length for your spine, lots of length for your breath. Slowly take your block, bring the feet hip distance. We're gonna take a supported half bridge. So first lift the hips, your feet are parallel, number 11, and then place the block low setting or medium setting right under the bony portion of the back of your pelvis, sacrum. Option to grab side edges of the mat. And then again, where do you trust the support? Where do you trust the props, the earth, bottoms of your feet? And then notice where are the areas of tension in your body? Where does your body start to hold on, to brace for something, to anticipate something? And then imagining that something really heavy is sitting on your lap, lift the hips up. So lots of engagement and activity at the backs of the legs, glutes, block comes out, slowly roll down through the spine as you exhale. Draw the knees in, find those knee circles. If you're craving another figure four, go ahead and take it.
And then slowly, we're going to take your pillow. So similar to how we set up at the beginning of class, but this time, you're going to take your feet together, knees, oh, excuse me, knees wide for the Baddha Konasana. So you might be used to taking blocks under the knees for this shape, but we're going to try it a little bit different here. So the support is all the way under both legs. Feet together, knees wide, laying down. If you want a happy baby before ending, please add it in. And then the arm variation invitation. If you don't have the range of motion for this, you can always take something up behind you so that the arms are resting on something rather than the earth. So like if you have a meditation cushion, great option. I didn't set up for that, but I'm just gonna show you now. You'll grab opposite elbows, let the arms reach up and back. If they easily touch the earth, just let them rest on the earth. With each exhale, can you find the grounding? Can you find that ability of turning your body over to the weight of gravity? You can even start to dip down through the top layer of earth below whatever it is that's supporting you. No matter where you are, even if you are in a high rise building, there is earth below you. So you can start to let those extra um, sensory perception dive down to that place. Option is switch which forearm is on top. As we close out the class, the option is to stay here for a little bit longer, or if you like your legs up the wall or up and over a support, you can shift into that shape. Or if you really love Shavasana, go ahead. I am going to turn off the video. So if you're watching the replay, just prepare for whatever settings you have. And just remember when it is time for you to come up away from the mat off of your props, take your time, let the head hang. Let yourself come slowly out of that grounded, slow state, either slipping into your bed or whatever's coming next. 